Well, hello and welcome to GetChemistryHealth.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this lesson, we're going to discuss the concept of percent yield. Well, before we can discuss percent yield, we need to discuss two other types of yield, and those are known as actual and theoretical yield. So when you go into a laboratory and you weigh out some chemicals and you mix them together, or if you're in industry and you're using chemicals to produce a new medicine or compound, the amount you actually produce at the end, that's known as the actual yield. This is also sometimes known as the experimental yield. But this is often different from the amount of product that you calculated you should have made. That's known as the theoretical yield. So for example, when you do a limiting reactant problem, you'll calculate what's the maximum amount of product that I should make in this reaction, and that's the theoretical yield. But when you actually run that reaction in a laboratory, you may get a different amount, and that's known as the actual yield. So we can use these two pieces of information to calculate what's known as the percent yield. And the percent yield is just a ratio of the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield, and then times 100, of course, to turn it into a percentage. So again, it's the amount that you actually made divided by the amount you calculated that you should have made times 100. So let's just do a couple of examples here. So suppose a student goes into a lab and they perform a reaction and they obtain 0.875 grams of their product, copper two carbonate right here. But when they calculated how much they should have made, the theoretical yield was 0.988 grams. So what would the percent yield be? Well again, the percent yield is the amount they actually got when they ran the experiment, 0.875 divided by the amount they calculated they should have got, 0.988 times 100. So let's just work that out real quick. So the percent yield is going to be 0.875 grams divided by 0.988 grams. And then again, we'll multiply that by 100 to turn it into a percentage. And that gives us 88.6%. So this would be the percent yield for this reaction. Again, it's the amount you actually made, the actual yield, divided by the theoretical yield, or the amount you should have made if everything went perfectly, times 100. So let's work a couple more examples. Consider the reaction of 5.00 gram C3H8. And this is propane, like you might find in a propane tank that you use for grilling, and 20.00 grams of oxygen. What is the theoretical yield in grams of water? Okay, so let's go ahead and write down what we know. So we have 5.00 grams of propane and 20.00 grams of oxygen. And we wanna know how many grams of water do we have? So we can tell that because we have two different reactants trying to figure out a product, this is a limiting reactant problem. And if you haven't watched the video lesson yet on that, I'll include a link to it. So let's go ahead and calculate what's the theoretical yield. How many grams of water could we make theoretically if everything goes flawlessly? So we'll start with the 5.00 grams of propane. And we know that whenever we have mass of a reagent, we wanna turn that into moles, so we use the molar mass. So you go to your periodic table, add up three carbons, uh, eight hydrogens, and you'll get 44.11 grams per mole of propane, and then we want to connect the propane to the water. So we know from our balanced equation that for every one mole of propane, we produce four moles of water. So one mole of propane, C3H8, can produce four moles of water. Okay, and now we're in moles of water, but we want to be in grams of water. So turn moles into mass, we'll use the molar mass. So again, we'll add up two hydrogens and an oxygen, and that's 18.02 grams per mole of water. And now we need to punch that into our calculator. So we'll take 5.00 divided by 44.11 times four times 18.02 grams, and I got 8.17 grams of water. And again, that's gonna be three significant digits because we have three here to start with, then we have four, exact, and four, so three is the fewest. Well, how about the 20.00 grams of oxygen? 
how many grams of water would that allow us to produce? So let's go ahead and take mass of oxygen into moles of oxygen. So we'll use the molar mass. 32.00 is the mass of two oxygens. And now we have moles of oxygen, but again, I wanna be in water. So for every five moles of oxygen, I can produce four moles of water. So we use that mole to mole ratio here. So five moles of oxygen can make four moles of water. And one more time, we're in moles of water, so we need to use the molar mass of water to get that into grams. Then we put this in our calculator. So 20.00 divided by 32.00 times four divided by five times 18.02 equals 9.01 grams of water. So these are our two options. So how much could you actually make? Which one do we pick? Well, we know again from our previous lesson that we always pick the smallest. So this is the theoretical yield of water. So if everything goes flawlessly, we could make 8.17 grams of water. Well, now let's look at part B. Part B says, what is the percent yield if 6.21 grams of water is produced? So theoretically, we could make 8.17. What if we only make 6.21 grams when we actually run the reaction? So the percent yield is going to be the actual yield. Again, the amount you make when you actually run the reaction. And you would have to be given this. You don't have any way to calculate that. Divided by the theoretical yield. And this one you could calculate. And we just did. So remember, it was 8.17. So we're gonna divide the actual yield by the theoretical yield. And then to make it a percentage, we'll multiply it by 100. And it looks like three significant digits. So I got 76.0%. So this is the percent yield for this reaction. All right, one last example just to really drive this point home. So calculate the percent yield of aluminum chloride when 2.75 grams of aluminum reacts with 9.50 grams of chlorine to produce 9.87 grams of aluminum chloride. Okay, so we have a lot of numbers here, so let's break it down. So it says 2.75 grams of aluminum reacts. So let's put that in here. 2.75 grams of aluminum reacts with 9.50 grams of chlorine to produce 9.87 grams of aluminum chloride. Now this number is not the theoretical yield. That we have to calculate. This must be the actual yield. So they're saying when the experiment work was run, they produced 9.87. We want to know the percent yield, which means we need to calculate, well, how many grams should they have produced? What's the theoretical yield? Well, again, we have two different reactants, so we know it's going to be a limiting reactant problem. So we'll take 2.75 grams of aluminum and we'll turn that into moles using the molar mass. So find aluminum on your periodic table, 26.98 grams per mole of aluminum. And then we have moles of aluminum, but we're trying to find aluminum chloride. So we look at our balanced equation and we see that it's a two to two mole ratio. So for every two moles of aluminum, we produce two moles of aluminum chloride. And now we're in moles of aluminum chloride, but we wanna be in grams, mass. So we have to find the molar mass of aluminum chloride. So you'll add up an aluminum and three chlorines. And I did that and I got 133.33 grams per mole of aluminum chloride. So we put that in our calculator and I got 13.6 grams of aluminum chloride. Okay, so that's one possible answer. Well, now we need to also solve for the other reactant, the 9.50 grams of chlorine. So 9.50 grams of chlorine, turn that into moles using the molar mass. So 70.90 grams is the mass of a mole of chlorine. 
Again, we want to relate chlorine to the product. So for every three moles of chlorine, we can produce two moles of aluminum chloride. So three moles of chlorine per two moles of aluminum chloride. And same molar mass, of course, so 133.33 grams per mole of aluminum chloride. And I put that in my calculator and I got 11.9 grams of aluminum chloride. Okay, so what's our theoretical yield? Well, again, we're going to pick the smallest one. So 11.9 grams is the amount we can make theoretically if everything goes flawlessly. But it didn't go flawlessly, apparently, because we only made 9.87 grams, it says. So what is the percent yield? Well, again, the percent yield is going to be the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield. So let's go ahead and calculate that. So the percent yield is... The actual yield, 9.87 grams, divided by the theoretical yield, which we just calculated was 11.9 grams. So 11.9 grams. And then times 100, as always, for a percentage. And it's going to be three significant digits because these are both three. So I got 82.9%. So this is the percent yield if you should have made 11.9 grams, but you actually made 9.87 grams. Well, I hope you found that video useful. As always, if you did, be sure and like this video and give it a thumbs up. And also go ahead and subscribe to my channel so you never miss any future content. You can also come and visit me at GetChemistryHelp.com where you'll find even more video lessons, practice problems, and worksheets that make learning chemistry fast and easy. Have a great day.